Hi everybody, very welcome to yet another Mentor Podcast. I hope you're all doing fantastic as always. So, in my Mentor Aviation app, I promised that I would show you how to do a complete FMC CDU setup, right? So, uh, here it goes. We are going to go through exactly what to do all the way until the FMC CDU is set up for takeoff. If you want to see the whole setup sequence, how to set up the aircraft properly, then I uh, advise you that you download the Mentor Aviation app and you get the setup playlist because there you have all of it how to do it from dark all the way until we're ready for taxi so here we go the first thing that you will be uh, faced with when you uh, get into the cockpit and uh, you start working on the cdu is the ident page now the ident page you just need to check that the model is correct which it is in this case it's a 737 800 with winglets and that the nav database is also correct if the nav database is not correct, you will get a warning down here saying nav database out of date. Okay. So once we have checked that, we go to the POS init page. Now the POS init, this is to give the IRS's information to align on. Okay, so the IRS themselves, the laser gyros, have already aligned themselves, but they need to know where they are. So we need to tell them that. The way to do that is we start with putting a reference airport. We're in Manchester, so it can go of Charlie Charlie. Put that as a ref airport. That will give the lat longs of the airport reference points for Manchester. Now, then we go to the next page and we pick up the GPS position from the aircraft. So we'll use GPS left most of the time. Put that into the scratch pad, the previous page, and we put that into the IRS position. Now, as you can see, they they, they um, are fairly similar, they're not going to be exact because the GPS is exactly where we are while this is the airport reference point, but they're very close to each other. Now, when we've done this, it means that the uh, IRSs can start working on actually aligning properly. You can see here, this warning, unable required nav performance, it just tells us that the IRS are not ready, they're not aligned yet. So that will disappear as soon as the IRSs are aligned. We can clear that for now. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to set up the route. Now, the route is going to be on your flight plan. So, to go to the route, and since we've told the, air, the, uh, the CDU where we are, it gives us that as a suggestion in the scratch pad. So, we put Echo Golf Charlie Charlie as our origin, and then we have a look at our flight plan. And in this case, we are going to fly to Dublin. So, that's Echo, India, Delta, Whiskey, and we put that as our destination. Now the CO route stands for company route, so we don't use that. That is a pre-programmed route, and since the route tends to change um, a long way, it's, it's a lot of work for the companies to keep up the company routes, so we don't use them. So we skip that, and next it asks for runway. Now instead of writing the runway into the scratch pad here, what we can do is you can go to the departure arrivals page, and we can choose the departure from Manchester, which runway we're going to use, we'll know that from the 80s. So in this case, we're going to use runway 23 right for departure. It then selects that and it then gives us only the departures, the standard instrument departures available from that particular runway. So in our case, we are going to do a Monty 1 Romeo departure. That will be on your flight plan as well. And you can also check it by asking for the clearance. Monty 1 Romeo. So if you go back to route page now, you'll see that it has selected 23 right. And on the next page, it says Monty One Romeo all the way to the, uh, the last waypoint on the SID. Now from there, we need to go to our flight plan and we need to have a look and see what the actual route tells us. So in this case, uh, after Monty One Romeo, it says we need to go direct to Wallasey, which is Whiskey Alpha Lima. And if we, if we don't enter an airway here, it's going to assume that we're going direct, direct Wallasey. After Wallasey, uh, we have an airway called Lima 10. So the airways are always on the left via Lima 10 to, in this case, Penel. And then after Penel, it's an airway called Lima 70. Direct to Bagso. And after bag, so it's an arrival route, so departure arrivals again. This time it's an arrival into Dublin. So we were going to do a bag, so actually we can start by selecting the runway we're going to use. It's going to be an ILS 28. 
and a bag so one Lima departure there now now the route page is filled up okay goes all the way no route discontinuities then if you go to legs page you can actually move your uh, way through the route so the route page will only tell you which airways uh, and the two points that you have but the legs page will tell you all the individual waypoints just walk through that you can do it in plan on the navigation display that way we will see the route as well and make sure that there's no route discontinuities or any crazy things going on in the route okay if we're happy with the route we then have an activate prompt here we activate it that will uh, activate the execute light now we will not execute it because the execution will be done together with the pilot monitoring when he or she arrives after their uh, walk around as part of the route check and if you want to see how a route check is done then get the mentor aviation up and you'll see it's in the instructional video there right so we've done that the route page now we want to set up the performance so if you press init ref init ref will bring you to the page that the FMC CDU or the FMC system thinks you should go to since the IRS's are not yet aligned it means that it goes to the post init page because it's still waiting to be aligned now we don't want to go there we want to go to performance so index and here we have all of the different index pages and we want to do uh, performance so we select performance now here we are right so the performance information will also be largely taken from your flight plan. The cost index might vary from different airlines. Uh, a very short description of the cost index is as l the lower the cost index, the slower the aircraft will fly and the less fuel it will burn. The higher the cost index, it will fly faster and it will burn more fuel. So it's depending on if your airline um, values quicker flight times or uh, less fuel burn, basically. So we are going to use a fairly low cost index today. We're going to lose cost index 6. Reserves taken straight from the flight plan. And uh, in the case of our flight today, we have a, a reserve rounded up to 2.7. Zero fuel weight. Uh, we have an estimated zero fuel weight from our flight plan as well, uh, which is the zero fuel weight today is 58.9. Now that is taken from the performance figures that the performance department had when they issued the flight plan. So it might be different when the actual uh, load sheet comes, which is why we do the performance later on when we get the load sheet. With 58.9 and fuel of 4.8, uh, we now have a gross weight of 63.7. Here, the FMC, CDU, uh, thinks that our trip altitude should be 354. That is because we have a really short flight. So that's the optimum flight level for this short flight. However, in this case, the flight plan is telling us that we've been F, that we've been capped by ATC. They want us at the lower level. So we're gonna be flying at flight level 220. We'll put that up here. Now, as you can see, that, execute, that arms the execute light for the performance part. But we're not going to um, execute that just yet. That's also part of the performance calculations when we do when we get the load sheet. But we can put in some, some more of the information we have. So the cruising wind is going to be taken from the flight plan and it's going to be taken from the top of climb cruise wind. So the top of climb cruise wind on this leg is 243 at 40. Now the reason we're using the top of climb wind and not the, the average wind is because we want the FMC to calculate our top of climb as accurately as possible. Now this wind might be very, very different from our uh, average wind. So in order to, to, uh, to get an accurate fuel burn, we're going to have to put the average wind in at some point. And I'll show you that in a second. Ice deviation is also taken from the top of climb. Um, point in this case it's based on uh, on the standard atmosphere so you're gonna have a minus or a plus in this case we have plus four so it's four degrees warmer than standard atmosphere which will give us then a temperature of minus 25 approximately at our top of climb we go from there transition altitude is in because the FMC knows which departure we're using and it's taking it from there the M1 limit here we put in our actual outside temperature in this case today we have from the 80s nine degrees outside so slash nine whenever you have a slash like this it means that if you put the slash before the figure it's going to be put on that side if you put it like this 
or without the slash, it's going to put it on this side. Okay. Right. So this now is giving us the with this temperature 26k fixed D rate 98.0. That's because the the APU is not running, so we that's going to change slightly when we uh, put the APU bleed on. And we have a selected temperature here. These are the D rates, the fixed D rates. We can go either with 26, 24, 22, 27k bump. And we can also enter an assumed temperature to derate the engines. Now, why would we want to do that? We always try to derate the engines as much as possible. That's to save on noise, to save on engine life, and uh, on fuel, obviously, and for environmental purposes. So we want to try to take off with as little thrust as possible to still be completely legal and within the performance um, in the performance calculations. Okay. Next point is takeoff. So here we would select the flap setting we're going to use for departure. Now we don't really know that yet, we're going to have to do the performance, so we'll leave that empty for now. Now, like I said, we, uh, we want to get as accurate fuel burn as possible when we do the route check later on and we check the fuel. So what we do now is we go to legs page, if you go to the route data prompt over here, and then we go forward, we will come to a point which is after our top of climb. Okay, so Wallacey, at Wallacey we would have reached flat with 220. Now, what we do here is that at our top of climb point, we now put in the average wind, which we'll also get from our flight plan. So the average wind is 235 at 30. And by doing this, it means that when we do our route check later on, we will have the wind for the climb, which will be one we put in perf in it, to uh, calculate the best top of climb. And we will also have the best average wind for the rest of the route so we will get the accurate fuel figure on arrival okay so you have you have to do both of these now on a short flight it makes very little difference but on a really long flight it makes a huge difference okay so this is an important step good so basically we've now set up the route we've set up the performance as far as we can go so now it's time to wait until we can do the cdu the final cdu pre-flight procedure together with the pilot monitoring when he or she arrives from the walk around. Right guys, so just to show you what would happen then um, when we get the load sheet, you are, if you get the Mentor Aviation app um, and the setup uh, playlist, you will see us do this CDU final pre-flight um, procedure. But just as an example on how it might look, I'm gonna continue here just to see how the CDU uh, work uh, goes along. So, Let's say, for example, that I get the load sheet and the zero fuel weight that we get from the load sheet is slightly lower than the one we've had on the flight plan. So in this case, it's 58 tons. I will tell the first officer to say, okay, so zero fuel weight is 58, and the first officer will then put the zero fuel weight in. Now, to see, there's a small discrepancy here. So the first officer will say that, okay, so it's 900 kilos less than expected, and I will look, and it'll probably be because we're lacking a few passengers, so it's got a little bit more uh, children than expected. Then, once we have clarified that, the first officer will call out 62.8 gross weight. I will then verify that towards my load sheet. And if that is correct, I will ask the first officer to execute the performance. So they will then execute. Good. Now that's set. Continue to the N1 limit. Providing that the APU uh, is now on, then uh, the first officer will call out the 26K value, which is since the first officer, since the uh, APU is not running now, it's going to be 0.8 less than this, so it's going to be 97.2. And I'll write out 97.2. We'll then put all the performance figures into our um, performance application or the paperwork that we might be using to verify what kind of performance we are to use. And in this case, uh, with all of the conditions, the dry runway, the wind, the outside temperature, the QNH, flap setting we're expecting to use, any malfunctions on the aircrafts, NTIs use, and the, the, the gross weight, it will give us, just look at the gross weight there, 62.8. It will tell us that we can, with that weight, sorry, I'll go back, we can use 22k D rate. So we select 22k, read out this. This is 0.7 less than this, so it's uh, 
and we can also use an assumed temperature of 42 degrees which will further uh, derate and further derate the uh, N1 value. So in this case we're going to take off with 87.6 as our N1 value. Then once we have directed this and of course it's really important that we check that this performance is correct. We select our flap setting. We did a performance calculation based on flaps 5 so we put that in. And we then check that the FMC speeds are within one knot from the speeds that our uh, performance application have calculated. So in this case they are, we'll just select those, 138, 138, 142, and the first officer will set 142 on the uh, MCP as well. And this, my friends, is how to set up the CDU from start to finish. So I hope you like this, guys. Uh, use this together with the uh, Mantra Aviation app in order to understand and to see how to properly set up the 737-800. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time.